So what happens before the creative moment? Uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a gap, uh, there's a white page, or there's a song sheet to fill up. Or he talks about that horrible moment, and you know, and then that people, some people uh, in a creative block will push something out, faced with that emptiness. Mm -hmm. But he said that emptiness is massively creative. Mm -hmm. Do you know, so mm -hmm. because of that emptiness, I think a lot of people don't go into the studio, or don't go back to what they're making. What is it about this abstraction that you love, or that really connects to you? Because sometimes abstraction is about nothing, it's also about everything. Am I trying to recreate something great? So you're always battling with this sort of feeling of don't try to go up and make something great, go down and see what the basic language is, you know? It's a dialogue between how loose can you make it while still pulling it back to something that's got structure. It's a difficult question because the answer is different nearly every time, but I said to him, I'm I'm involved in manipulating empty space. I'm not turning the empty space into uh, uh, something else. I'm trying to discuss how empty space works. It's about empty space, really. You know, so sometimes in the paintings I make, you'll see shapes and boxes and forms, almost sculptural forms built up on top of each other. So I do consider that I'm working with three dimensions. And it might be even a stage further than that, where I'm trying to explode the painting completely. Yeah. Explode, like even that one over on the, on the right. There's an attempt there to sort of uh, open up the language completely so that you might feel what it's like to be in front of the canvas. You know, because the, the audience is what it's about. You know, I, I spend loads of time with paintings. I don't need any more time with paintings. Right. When I was younger, the existential part is sort of represents maybe a useful part. Mm -hmm. Where you, you know, you're allowing yourself to be full of angst, you know. But at the same time, uh, the dialogue part maybe is the older part that wants to engage people and has grown up a little bit. Mm -hmm. and really wants to be involved with other people mm -hmm. in other situations. So, you know, the dialogue is finally saying, I don't care if these are good or bad, I want other people to see them. You know, for me, the paintings at home, they're all over the place and they're everyday things and right. I just don't even see them anymore after a while. And then they have this small moment in them, hopefully in an exhibition. Yeah. And then in theory, they go off to people's homes. And you call yourself a curator with a small C, but what really strikes me is I think you are an amazing connector of people and you are always connecting and introducing people and it's just a great skill you have and I can see how that would really help you as a curator. It's strange like the, the new year in art exhibition I'm very happy with the reaction to that I'm happy with the way it worked you mentioned Aikido earlier on like there's a there's a feeling in the martial art Aikido that I didn't do it it just happened you know, so you're not trying to throw somebody over, they fell over and you were just happened to be there. And that's how that exhibition felt to me. You can call it curating, but for me it's design. I'm a big fan of Bruce Mao and his view of uh, design being everything. Where we fail to design, we design for failure. I said, I'm leaving college and going to Cork, you know, and he said, okay, make sure that you're well fed and you sleep well. And I said, what? He said, well, make sure you can't make art unless you're well fed and you slept in the bed. What's the hardest part to being an artist? I think it's just being honest about the fact that this is a real thing, this is a real path. On one level, there seems to be a need that art has to justify itself by associating itself with something else. You know, so for me, it's believing that painting is a real path in itself. It's a thing unto itself and, and you know, try and stay the course. Am I just making painting important because I say it's important? You know, we're making the romantic myth of the artist, but it's much more profound than that. It's you know, this is what you spend, spend your time and your energy on. Therefore, it has meaning. There's something dangerous about writing and speaking about your work in, in a way that's not true. Because your brain then accepts that that is true. If you keep repeating to yourself, my work is about the post-structuralist investigation of such and such and such, this is art speak. And your, your, your brain doesn't know that that's not true, you know. And, and then you've got this shift and divide then between the applications Dermot and the real Dermot who's making work. Is that a Zen reference or is that a project reference? It's both. <laughs> <laughs> and you discover people weren't trying to be happy, they were trying to get into a state of flow. And the, the happiness was kind of incidental. Yeah, we think that somebody else out there is going to save us and help us and bring us into the fold, you know. but. The art world is full of silos of people, you know, doing their own thing. So why not you set up your own world?
I need the last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>